Hi, I'm lost in the labyrinth again with Alex. Now, the last time I was making a video in the labyrinth, I was talking about color grading the DJI FPV drone. Now, this time, we'll talk about color grading the Osmo Action 4, the D-Log M picture profile. I'm gonna show you a very easy way how you can color grade it and get the most out of your image. Oh, the first puzzle. So I'm going to explain this using DaVinci Resolve. Now you can do the same thing in Final Cut or Premiere Pro, just anywhere where you can color grade your video footage. But before we get into the whole color grading process, we have to first set the D-Log function on the camera and you can find this under color. So just choose D-Log and you will see that you have 10 bit written beside it because D-Log is recorded with 10 bit colors, which is another awesome feature of this camera. So once you have that set, you can just record a video and then import that into your favorite editing software. I'm gonna import it into DaVinci Resolve. This labyrinth is quite conflicting. Maybe I can cheat like this. In every software, before you start color grading, you have to set the color space of the timeline and the output color space. In DaVinci Resolve, you can find this under the settings, under the preferences, color management, and I'm using the DaVinci Resolve's wide gamut color space. This is a color space that holds pretty much all the colors of every other color space you can possibly imagine. So all the different nuances of all the different colors. Now we'll be exporting everything into an Rec 709, which is a quite a smaller color color space and it's meant for 8-bit delivery and for every device that you can possibly imagine. So if we work with a wider gamut color space and then export into a smaller color space, we're not actually losing any detail. So this is the right way to go. He's hot. I mean hot, like like really hot. So like the easiest way to color grade any log footage is to use an official correction LUT. Now you can always do it manually, but if there is a correction LUT, I do suggest that you use it and I will put a link down below to the official DJI Osmo Action 4 LUT, which you can find on their website so that you don't have to search. So I link is down below, click on it. Also hit the like button while you're doing that. So the first step is to import the LUT into your editing software. In DaVinci Resolve, you can actually go into your LUTs page and then you can open up the location where the LUTs are and then you can copy the .cube file into that folder and remember when you get back to DaVinci Resolve you have to refresh the folder so you don't need to restart the whole software just refresh the folder and then the Osmo Action 4 Cube LUT is going to appear and now we can set up the node tree I'm going to do this with just three nodes the puzzle I think this is going to uh, take a while. And in the meantime, I can explain how the node tree works. So in DaVinci Resolve, we work with nodes. In Premiere Pro, we work with layers. So layers are like one adjustment on top of the other. And in DaVinci Resolve, we have one node after the other. It's the same logic, just another graphical form. So we start first by creating three nodes. The first node is going to be called adjustments. That's how I named it. So you can name it any way you want. And this is where I'm going to adjust the exposure and the colors and maybe a little bit of the contrast. The second node is going to be the LUT node. This is where we'll be converting that D-Log M into a Rec 709 look. And then the third node is going to be the sharpness. Now, in the end, I'm actually going to add another node, another node, and then another node on top of that to make the video footage look, well, the way you see it in this video with a nice blurry background and a little bit of motion blur. Like the solution, I have to bring this back to Alex somehow. So this is how we approach the problem. We put the LUT onto the second node so that we already have the conversion. And then we go to the first node and adjust the highlights, the shadows, maybe the contrast, so that we have a nice stretched out waveform. Now the idea is that the really bright elements in the scene should be more to the top on the waveform and the really dark elements should be more into the dark. Now remember, if something is completely clipping, then it's white, it should be out of the waveform. And if something is completely dark, black, then it should be below the bottom. So you have to really fine tune the highlights and the shadows so that you have a nice strong and punchy image. That's the whole key. So you need to get as much signal out through the monitor as you can by adjusting the highlights, the shadows, and maybe even the midtones. But because you already applied the LUT, you always see the end result. Now the second adjustment layer, as I said, is the LUT layer. You can control how strong the LUT is by applying the gain of the whole layer. Now I typically just leave that at max for this LUT because it's 
it's not that aggressive. And in the third layer, this is where I add the sharpness. I'm going to add the sharpness in the sharpening section as you can see right here. Now this is pretty much done when it comes to color grading. Now we start to make things more interesting. Like a mini game. Nice. Oh, nice. Two in one. Now to spice things up, we're going to add three more layers. The first one is going to be the depth map. This is going to determine how far away things are in the scene. So I am closer and the background is further away and DaVinci Resolve has a very smart way of detecting this. Now for this, of course, you need the DaVinci Resolve Studio, so the paid version. And I do recommend if you want to do videos seriously, get the studio version. So the second note is going to be the blurry. So you can add the blurry opposite to the sharpness. If you decrease the radius value you're adding sharpness and if you increase it you're adding blur now for such a wide angle shot a value of 60 is good enough because you don't want to over blurry the background so in the depth map mode we first select the quality I think the the faster is just good enough and then you have to invert the mask so this is going to work in a way where everything that's white is going to get the effect and everything that's black is not going to get the effect but we're only going to use the mask node from this node now we connect both of the lines and the the first one is only used for visualization where you can then turn off the preview and that is not going to be visible anymore and the bottom line will act as a mask for the next effect. Now you can turn on the filters and the isolation and you can play with the sliders. I'm just going to leave the settings as they are right here. I'm just going to add a little bit of filtering so that I have a nice kind of you know, softer transition between what's sharp and what's not sharp. And for the final touches we're going to add motion blur. So in the last node we're going to go into the motion settings section again you need the DaVinci Resolve Studio for this and you can add motion blur in the section where you have the motion blur set here you can also add the denoiser and I would recommend adding denoising right in the front of the whole node tree so you want to have a nice clean start and then start color grading maybe you can add it at the end just experiment with this I think that with this camera there is absolutely no denoising necessary even when it gets really dark because this really does away with all the noise in the dark areas because of that enhance visual effects. No, it's like not the best day to do the labyrinth because it's like extremely hot and there is no wind blowing here in the cornfield. And yeah, while well, the sun is up there baking my face, but I know that I'm preserving all of the highlights and of course some of the shadows because I'm using D Log M. <laughs> and we're done! Yay, we're done! So thank you Labyrinth for having us. Now we need to get all the scores together and see if we've done a good job. And that's it. That's how you can color grade your DJI Osmo Action video footage. If you have any comments or questions, leave that down below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you probably in another Labyrinth. Bye bye.